Hi guys, I'm a Gottlieb here. Life is fast. So how do we keep up the pace? How do living things keep up the pace? Well, us, all living things, use energy. So how does our body manipulate that energy? Well, our cells have an organelle, the powerhouse of our cell, called the mighty mitochondria. Right now, let's go explore that mighty mitochondria. Let's go check it out and see what we can find out about this little really cool organelle. See you in a minute. So to learn more about mitochondria, we want to just take a quick refresher of the actual cell. So here we have an animal cell. And uh, the outside of the animal cell, you have your cell membrane, which keeps everything safe. As you sort of go into the inside, you'll see it's a big soup full of stuff. And all these little structures that you see in there, they have purpose and they have function. And so like you have your endoplasmic reticulum, Golgi bodies. I'm going to jump into the nucleus just because it's really important. So when you go in there, there's our most important stuff, the chromosomes. That is the whole cookbook for a living thing. You get a closer look of the chromosomes. You can unravel it. You have that double helix structure right there. And then you start to see the parts of DNA. So you have your sugars, your phosphates, and here's your nitrogenous bases in the middle, which are the words in the DNA. Let's see the parts a little bit better. So the nitrogenous bases A goes with T, G goes with C. They can reverse, uh, but they just don't like to be with the other partners. They don't like to switch around. Of course, if you want to make more DNA, then you have to unzip the DNA by pulling apart the little hydrogen, uh, little hydrogen bonds between them or the hydrogens that connect them. And so you split them apart and then the new pieces come in and fill in. They actually come in a little bit clumps a little bit bigger called nucleotides, where you've got a sugar, a phosphate, and a base. And then you have your two strands of DNA. Now, DNA does play an important role in the story, but not the DNA that's in the nucleus. So for mitochondria, it's a little bit different. So we're going to get to that. So let me go back to our animal cell. And so I'm going to zip right to those big kidney beans right there, your mitochondria. And so they look like kidney beans. They really do. And they have this sort of like maze-like structure on the inside. Now, this is a nice, fun little cartoon of them, but we're going to take a look at a real photograph taken by an elect electron microscope. So let's go to that now. Meet the mitochondria. Now, when we're talking about meet the mitochondria, we're actually talking about all the mitochondria because mitochondria is the plural. And so that means more than one. Mitochondrion is the singular. So mitochondrion. So what you're looking at, this electron microscope picture of this mitochondrion, this is a particular mitochondrion. And you can see it's got this cool slightly kidney bean shape. I'll just outline it right here. So slightly kidney bean. But there is a lot going on in the inside. So there's a lot of interesting structure in there, which we're going to talk about. And uh, so first of all, let's talk about the membranes. Now I outlined them here so you can see them a little better. And so this red section, this is the outer membrane. And so that basically keeps everything safe and protects that mitochondrion. And so then you have the inner membrane and you can see that is pretty intricate. So there's your inner membrane right there. And so there's a lot going on there. It looks like it kind of makes the outside of the walls within that mitochondria, all that bluish purple color right there. And uh, so now that takes me to those structures. And so we have a name for those structures. We call those the cristae. And so here they are in green, cristae. Cristae literally means ridge or wall. And so these are the walls of the mitochondrion. And what they do is they give surface area. And so they give a lot of extra space within there. And uh, just like if you think about it, like if you live in a house, imagine if your house had no walls, you'd have just one big room. And so how much could you really work with one big room? Where would you put your furniture? You know, how could you di divide up the space? And so with the mitochondria, there's so much going on in that cell that it needs these walls. It needs these extra little spaces in order to complete all of its little chemical reactions and things like that. And so it's a lot, a lot of complicated things going on in there. And that takes me to really the most important part of the mitochondrion, which is the empty space, ironically. And so right here in yellow, so you can see it, I'll, I'll choose the closest to yellow I can do. This is that inner part right there. All the spaces in between the walls, we call that the matrix. 
Yep, similar to the movie, except not. And uh, so the matrix is the space in between. And it's very interesting because of the things that science has found in there. What's contained in that matrix, so some of the things, here are some of the things. First of all, there's DNA. And we'll talk more about the DNA that's inside of mitochondria or inside the mitochondria. And uh, so there's also RNA. And so RNA is there to transcribe the DNA. And so you have to transcribe the message and send it somewhere. So you have to be able to translate that message into proteins. So you also need ribosomes. Well, they are there also. So there's ribosomes, DNA, RNA, ribosomes. There are these things called granules, which we don't know a whole lot about, but we know that they somehow manipulate little clusters of ions inside the cell. And there's a lot more. And more, like an advertisement. And so, and here's the special thing. The most unique thing about this organelle inside your cell is that it has all the ingredients and all the machinery to work as a cell all by itself. So not only does it have ribosomes, but it also has what those ribosomes make, which are amino acids and amino acid chains and all sorts of things. So there's so many things in here because that cell functions just like a cell, which is kind of crazy because it's like a little mini cell inside a bigger cell. Pretty cool, actually. Some scientists think that billions of years ago, there was a little bacterium. And uh, there were a lot of bacteria back there, but they think that this bacteria got trapped inside a membrane and that eventually that membrane became a cell with its own DNA with this little trapped bacterium in there, which then for us came what we call the mitochondria. And so this type of cell you're looking at right here is a cell that we refer to as eukaryotic, which means it has a nucleus. Whereas our bacterium over here is prokaryotic and does not have a nucleus, but it can do almost all the cell functions or you know, a significant amount of cell functions, especially making some form of energy. And your eukaryotic cell has a nucleus, so it has its own separate DNA. Pretty cool, actually, if you think about it. So there's one more little secret that the mitochondria holds, and that has to do with the mitochondria's DNA. Mitochondrial DNA, which is called mtDNA for short, is inherited differently from the DNA from your nucleus. In your nucleus, you inherit it from both mom and dad, but from your mitochondrial DNA, you only inherit that from mom. So now let's think about that. If you have mom and dad, and they have children. I'll give them three children. Let's say you've got a boy, you've got two girls. And so now mom, mom's mitochondrial DNA is going to be passed down, not dad's, because only the females pass it. So it goes from mother to child. And so mom is going to pass that mitochondrial DNA to each of her children. Now, when those children go ahead and get married and have children of their own, now let's say I'm going to give them each three. You know, let's say they have three kids. I'm not going to determine what their gender is. You could see squares or boys, circles or girls, uh, but here's what happens. So the mitochondrial DNA here, so this daughter will pass that on to all three of her children. So her children will match her and her mom. Now, on the other hand, the son, he can't pass that on, but it doesn't mean he doesn't have it but his wife has her own. And so his wife will pass her mitochondrial DNA onto each of their children. So you'll see there's a change with the mitochondrial DNA, a new generation here that's different. And yet over here, you can see how that's being carried on. Pretty neat. It's fascinating to actually map this out through generations and take a look how your ancestry goes. You can go millions of years and there are little changes and mutations in mitochondrial DNA, but very often those changes can be tracked, which is pretty exciting. I hope you enjoyed this session of DNA Live, or DNA LC Live rather, and uh, it's our little short. And if you like this topic, just you know, put it in the comments. We do check our comments. If you have questions, you can put them there as well. And uh, also, if you love us, eh, we like to hear that too every once in a while. 
And so have a great day and I'll talk to you again soon. Bye-bye.